Hey everyone, it's Daniel from InfraVest here. Just wanted to do a quick video on an article uh, from the Wall Street Journal talking about Europe um, having issues with uh, finding supply for its uh, natural gas. Now, I'll post the link in the uh, description here and um, just go through through the article. And, you know, I just want to talk about pretty interesting developments, right, that we're seeing with the euro right now. We're seeing the euro go from all the way from 1.06 down to 1.02 and reaching to that parity mark and can even go below parity. It's very likely that that could happen. Now, if you look at the euro on a, I think, a weekly or monthly chart, you'll see a head and shoulders formation, which is a bearish technical formation, along with uh, also weak fundamentals that you're hearing uh, from Europe. Now, in this whole crisis that's happening, right, between uh, Russia and Ukraine, this war that's happening, you know, Europe is truly one of the nations that are going to be heavily, heavily affected by these supply constraints and by these issues with higher energy prices. Now, the article talks about that uh, Russia started to cut a little bit of its oil, uh, sorry, natural gas supply uh, through the pipeline to Europe. And their excuse was basically that there was some technical glitch, right? So this is already the signs of Russia showing its power, throwing its weight around, right? When you look at Russia also, um, its, its own currency, the Russian ruble, right? is one of the best performing currencies out there, even though that they're going through a war with Ukraine and all of the West is basically trying to shut them down with their sanctions and negative um, uh, publicity around the situation of, uh, of what Russia is doing to Ukraine. But yet, the currency itself, right? The currency itself still continues to move up, especially as the US dollar and euros are basically halted for, uh, for Russia uh, to utilize, right? So what's happening, right? What's happening? And what's really happening here is you're seeing Russia play this really nice chess game perfectly. And you're seeing the East, right? The people who are working together like Russia, um, China, India, Saudi Arabia, right? They're working together in the sense that that econ economically, in terms of the uh, goods and services and the trades that's happening, they're probably doing transactions already today in different currency, whether it's the Chinese currency, whether it's a form of crypto, whether it's a, a Japanese uh, yen, right? And in order to transact in oil or in order, or, order to transact in, in other, um, other products, right? To get off that US dollar, euro kind of um, uh, standard, right? Now, you know, there's also debates about, um, you know, this is the start of the decoupling of the U.S. dollar and we're going to see the U.S. dollar fall off its world reserve status this year. Now, I don't think so that's going to happen, right? I don't think in, in a year's time, in a two years time, we're going to see the decoupling of the U.S. dollar. However, I do see that the East showing up its weight and showing up its uh, powers here saying that, hey, U.S., you can't really boss us around like you used to before and throw sanctions on us because we're going to start teaming up with other people who have, you know, had issues with, with your sanctions and we want to avoid that. And and what that might do is maybe create a, a fair um, playing field uh, for the economies as as a whole in the world rather than taking one out because if you take out United States right you're going to still hurt yourself right you can't take out United States you can't take out China the two massive economies right the United States is the biggest buyer in the world when it comes to goods and services the world still depends on the United States so you can't just decouple it you can't just get rid of it now, going back to the article about uh, Europe and this natural gas issue, I think Europe is, is in a very, very tough situation right now. And it's probably the first nations that are going to see a recession hit hard. 
And especially when you're starting to see certain things like Russia start to slow down its uh, gas, um, you know, natural gas to, to Europe and, and blaming it on a technical glitch. Now, European leaders are saying that Russia and Putin is doing this on purpose and striking war with, with Ukraine through this uh, passage of lower supply of, um, of natural gas, which is giving them the less ability to top up on the reserves for natural gas, especially when it comes down to winter time when they need it the most, right? So right now we're in the summer months. Uh, we got a couple of months till it starts getting cold again, and it's going to put Europe in a very, very odd, difficult situation, especially um, as you're seeing, uh, it's very, very reliant, very, very dependent. 40% or more than 40% of energy um, is dependent, Europe is dependent on Russia, and they're, they're running around to trying to find and create deals to find other sources of natural gas, right? You're having deals uh, with Germany, with other nations as well, uh, Italy as well, to try to fill that reserve and get ready for the winter months, right? So, you know, what can the West really do? In, in terms of trying to fight uh, Russia? Can they really go out and start throwing sanctions and start um, eliminating um, and, and buying less uh, commodities from Russia? Um, can they start doing it right away? And the answer is no, because you're just going to screw yourself at the end of the day. So it's kind of checkmate for, for, um, for Europe in a way that uh, even though Politically, you might come out and say that, hey, uh, we want to bring, um, you know, uh, Russia down. We want to stop Russia. We're going to stop buying oil. We're going to boycott them and we're going to, you know, stop um, doing business with them. But in fact, 40% of your energy is coming from Russia and you rely on it. So how you can't really do much <laughs> if you start doing that if you cut yourself you're gonna you know if you cut yourself from the natural gas supply you're gonna hurt yourself anyways and if russia does it to you then definitely you're gonna be hurt uh again in that situation and it's very possible that it could come down uh down the line in the coming months you could see russia play that kind of chess game to see and, and ask for what they want and to try to get what they want and um, if uh, the West doesn't comply, um, you know, Russia could do whatever the hell it wants to do and still do well in terms of its Russian ruble, still do well in terms of its economy, right? Because the oil that they're selling, right, is being, in a way, um, there was a, a really good um, um, uh, kind of podcast, I, I just forget the, the name of it, uh, but um, there was there's one very... Um, if I find if I find the person's name, I'll, I'll link it in the description. Um, you know, this person follows energy and oil quite 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 a bit, and uh, I think he's out of base uh, base out of uh, Saudi. Um, if I get that wrong, please. Um, you know, if if that person's watching this video, please don't hammer me. Uh, sorry, I'm forgetting the techni technicalities of of. Um, that account and that person's name so please ignore and um and sorry about that uh please ignore my um um uh, i'm forgetting forgetting what it, what to say so please ignore that um but anyways going back right um you're seeing that uh, this issue with the with the russia and 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 the world with with oil prices in any way when russia's selling oil to china and different countries at cheaper way cheaper than what the price is it's any way is going to come to the west europe or uh the us or or so on um in the form of a different package so think about it this way right russia is selling oil to china china's getting that repackaging it changing it up changing it up a bit and then selling it back to the west and and in other words you're still funding and, and funding the war and helping russia and that's why you continue to see its uh, currency um go up right that's one of the reasons there's other reasons also like for example russia did come out and say that hey if you want oil you gotta purchase it in russian rubles right with the west with europe that's what they threaten about now 
With this continued issue with energy prices, what does this mean in terms of also inflation, right? If you could, if you see natural gas and you see oil prices, um, you know, right now oil prices are coming off quite a bit. But if you start to see that the supply starts to dampen or, or decrease in a um, in such a way, then definitely that's going to push higher prices and it is going to affect the headline CPI. It is going to affect the the world as a whole. It is also going to affect the U.S. as headline CPI, like Powell said, they're focusing on headline CPI because consumers think about headline CPI, right? They're thinking about, they're looking at the gas prices. If it's going to be more expensive for them, they're going to talk about inflation, inflation, inflation. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And when you start talking about inflation, 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 um, guess what? You're still going to pay for gas because you need to pump it in your car and you need to go to work, right? So, it doesn't help in that situation, and that's why the Federal Reserve and a lot of central banks out there are raising rates to slow down the, the, the demand, and hopefully that might affect the supply side where manufacturers and retailers out there start lowering the prices. Now, however, like the last video I talked about of the bullwhip effect, right, we're seeing in certain goods, right, we're seeing the prices start to come up, come down. If you look at Walmart and Target, you're seeing 70% sales. Just Google it. Um, and um, in certain areas, and that's because they ordered a lot of this inventory and they want to get it off their, their shelves, right? So when you talk about in inflation, in certain areas, probably you'll see the prices come down, but other areas start to go up. Like, for example, services, right? We're seeing airlines. We're seeing hospitality industry, right? We talked, I, I posted a video previously about the um, hotels that are out there uh, scrambling, looking for, for workers uh, and, and willing to, especially in Europe, willing to pay them higher salary. So this is not looking good for Europe at all, right? Right. So, you know, higher prices from the vacations, higher prices from people flying, higher prices because hotels and hospitality industry are going to see inflow of demand, people coming and purchasing, right, um, in, in Europe. Um, hotels out there increasing the wages of employees. Wages tend to be sticky inflation that, that continues to move up. Um, on top of that, the euro is coming off to low levels, which means what? Which means that's also inflationary because when you have foreigners coming to your country and they're, or, or you have other countries wanting to, buy, um, wanting to buy certain goods from Europe, then they will be able to buy more of it because your currency is low. So you've got a currency, a low currency, which is inflationary. You got that, um, that, that low um, employment, right? Um, not, not enough jobs being filled in the hospitality industry, which is going to push prices up. You've got this concern of, of, of oil and energy, uh, which also is putting upward pressure um, on, on Europe. So when you put all of this together, this is not looking good for Europe. Definitely not looking good for Europe. And they're definitely going to face inflation um, and they're going to face a harder recession, especially as many of these businesses may not be able to handle the cost, may not be able to handle the demand inflow if you've got a lot of foreigners coming in, which means that if you can't provide the services, then those foreigners or those, your customers are going to look for, for um, another person or another business who can. And when there's a lot of demand for, the, for that particular service, the price is going to move up. So I don't think we're out of this inflation story in Europe and even around the world. Sure, we might see a little bit of a dip here and there, but I think it's not over. And I think it's it. we could see signs of a pickup. Now, although we're seeing crude oil do come down, we're seeing it come off from $110 per barrel down to uh, below $100 per barrel. So that's a good sign. And that's why you see equities and especially NASDAQ, the tech index, start to rally. We also are seeing the U.S. Uh, Treasury bonds, their yields also come down. So that is also a little bit more positive for the, um, for the uh, equity market as well, right? The only question is for how long? Right. Is this going to last? Are we going to see a turnaround? Right. And especially in Europe, with all the concerns that I mentioned, if we start to see a pickup of these issues of supply of whatever lockdowns that come in the future of 
even, I didn't even talk about the food issues, the food uh, supply issues, right? We're seeing the US dollar move up, we're, we're, we're hearing that um, there is a supply issue with food, uh, very possible that you could see food prices start to move up. And especially, you know, there was an article, uh, I'm not sure if I covered this in one of my videos, uh, but in Maine, right, you're, you're hearing about a fertilizer contamination um, in, in, um, among these farmers and these farmers who, who got a lot of milk had to dump all of that because it's contaminated, right? They can't sell it, right? So that's also going to cause and, and put more fuel to, to the fire, right? So I don't think we're out of the woods. I think what some, what, if you really want to see prices to come down, I think that this recession that we are in unofficially, right? We haven't officially called the recession yet, but unofficial recession, because a lot of people are determining, you're seeing it with, from the data weakness and growth. But with this time that we are in, I think a mild recession, if this is going to be a mild recession, I don't think the inflation Definitely, you might see inflation come off a bit, but it's not going to be solved and reach that 2% target. I think to get to that 2% target, there either has to be a very strong recession that kills demand heavily, or, you know, and, and, and to get to that, maybe um, the Fed needs to raise rates not to 4%, but even higher. If you start hearing the Fed, if you start hearing central banks or the rhetoric coming out, that uh, especially the U.S. coming out and saying that, hey, we're going to raise rates uh, more than than the market is anticipating of 3.5% this year to maybe uh, more than 4%, right? Then definitely that's going to put downward pressure and definitely that's going to affect the economy as a whole. And sure, that could be the point where you'll see uh, prices come down. But in terms of inflation, I think we're going to stick with inflation for quite some time, for a very long time. And Europe is in a very ugly situation where they have high inflation. They've got threat from Russia with the natural gas, right? And if you've got no natural gas coming in, there's going to be riots. There's going to be also, on top of that, to add more pain, you know, you're going to have um, food shortages. And, and you'll see food prices moving up. And again, Europe is already in a situation of threat from Russia, um, along with uh, no, you know, if, if people are cold and people uh, can't heat their homes and they can't eat, then guess what? People are going to commit crimes. There are going to be riots. So Europe is in a very dangerous situation. On top of that, right, the euro is coming down, which is creating inflationary pressures as well. The, the, the U.S., is increasing interest rates which is pushing the dollar higher so whatever you know Europe has to buy from dollar uh, for, sorry from the US you utilizing dollars going to be more expensive for them so it's definitely going to affect them as well in that way and as the US central bank continues to raise rates the European ECB can't raise rates as aggressively compared to uh, the US central bank and if they can't do that then guess what the the dollar versus the euro, you're going to see the euro continue to move down as the dollar continues to move up. The dollar is already at uh, levels back in 2002 levels. We're already at near highs of 2002. And Europe, you know, is, is complete opposite, vice versa. So you can probably see the euro continue to reach to that parity level and maybe even below. And Europe might be the first one that hits into that hard recession that might trickle into the other countries as well, especially in the West, especially in the US and Canada and so on. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Check out the video uh, that I posted in the description in the Wall Street Journal and uh, subscribe if you want to continue learning more about these developments. See you guys. Bye.